Okay guys, so today what I wanted to go over was a few things on, um, on diesels and uh, not so much tips and tricks or anything, but just some few points to make on diesel vehicles. And so, um, I, and I apologize, I know it's been a while since we've done a video. We've been crazy busy getting everything ready for our move, uh, getting set up at the new property, um, and, and, and business has been really busy. This is uh, mine and Amanda Lynn's busy season is during the summertime. So, so it's been uh, just a crazy, crazy summer. Uh, we'll have more videos coming out, especially in July, but specifically this fall, we'll have a bunch more coming out. Uh, and we'll try to get back on our schedule doing one or two a week. Um, but anyways, so the truck behind me, you see this is my Dodge Ram uh, 3500. Uh, this has got the 5.9 Cummins with uh, this. I bought it with 80,000 miles on it. It's got 90,000 now. Um, but uh, it was this was actually my dad's truck. Um, I bought it from him. Uh, I drove it off the lot with him brand new when I was in high school. So uh, it's it's been, this is a very sentimental truck to me. But uh, uh, in, in buying this, um, I, yeah, we've had to do a lot of research on diesels. This isn't my first diesel vehicle, but it's my first really heavy duty diesel truck. Um, and so what I wanted to, to do is make sure that we're doing everything the way that it's supposed to be doing and uh, that we're taking care of all our maintenance issues. And so um, the, every manufacturer, whether it's Power Stroke, Duramax, Cummins, uh, so, so Ford, Dodge, or, or, or GMC, um, they all have their issues and all have the things that they inherently do wrong. Sorry, I know you guys can hear the goats over there. They're screwing around. I like the Dodges because I like the 5.9 Cummins. I think the Power Stroke is a great engine as well, especially the old 7.3. Um, I think for modern uh, diesel engines, they, they're... I, it, <laughs> Sorry, they're driving me crazy. For modern diesel engines, it's really hard to beat the 6.7 Cummins. Uh, but this is, like I said, this is the old 5.9 Cummins. So we got this before we had to have EGRs and DEF and all that crap. Um, and so uh, one of the things that you end up doing with diesels is we want to take care of all those things that we know are going to be problematic for that specific one. So if it's a 6.0 Power Stroke, you want to get your bulletproofing done. If it's a 5.9 Cummins, we want to go through, and especially if it's an automatic transmission, we want to be ready to either rebuild it, remove it, or swap it for a manual. If, if possible, even though that's a really intense job. Um, this one has already been changed out. This one has an aftermarket towing transmission in there. It is an automatic. The other thing that happens with, with Dodges is Dodge is notorious for building a little bit weaker front ends. This front end has been uh, all rebuilt um, with good quality Moog parts. Uh, the last thing we've got is a red head um, steering box going up there in the front, um, and that actually comes, supposed to come on Friday, so that'll be going in this weekend, and we'll do a video on that and, and show you all the install. That should be a fairly easy installation. Um, and uh, so, so those are the, the, the big things with the Dodge is that, that transmission in the front end that they tend to not do very well. This truck, um, the lift pumps in them are not notoriously great or solid, so a lot of people swap those out, and that's the first upgrade we get to. So that's kind of, we'll blend these first two points. So the first one is let's take care of all those maintenance issues that we know are going to be problems, and then the second one, let's go ahead and get those upgrades out of the way that we know are gonna be beneficial. So that with this truck, the lift pump is a very beneficial upgrade that helps us get a little bit more longevity, especially out of our injector pump, that uh, the VP44 is actually, it's got a bad reputation, it's actually a really solid pump. It's the lift pump that's the problem with this truck. And so that's why we've gone ahead and upgraded this. This has a fast lift pump in there. Um, and that helps us also keep up because we have aftermarket injectors to get a little bit more power uh, as well as an aftermarket turbo in here. So we want that, uh, we, we want to make sure that we're, we're able to keep up with the fuel demands of the truck. Um, <clears throat> So, so with that, so with, with uh, as far as upgrades go, the next thing that we have is we have a good quality set of gauges in here. This truck, I'm getting ready to install some gauges in the A pillar there. We have the uh, the edge tuner that has the gauges offered with it. I'm not crazy about the accuracy of those, and that's why I'm going to go ahead and install the manual ones on there, and then I'll just set the tune when I want it and, and keep it unplugged for the most part. Um, but uh, so the, the A pillar gauges, I think, are a little bit more accurate. The the, the manual gauges that go up there, um, especially because a lot of those you can put new sensors on when you install them. Hey, Delilah. I'm not focused on making a um, truck that's um, either a got a ridiculous lift kit on it so that I can't use it for what it's used for, which is towing and hauling heavy loads. Um, I'm not interested in that at all. I'm not interested in rolling coal or any of that crap. Um, what I want to be able to do with this truck is haul real heavy payloads because that's what we're going to be using it for. We're going to be using it for hauling cattle, uh, for hauling lots of equipment and, uh, and materials around. Um, and so we want it to be set up for that. 
It does have four-wheel drive system because we're going to be using it for moderate off-roading, specifically if I'm going hunting or whatever it is. Um, and because the mud here in Alabama is is unreal, especially with the amount of rain, it's very important to have a truck if you're going to be doing anything off-road with it, uh, whether you're driving through a field or anything, to have that four-wheel drive. Um, and I just don't quite understand buying a truck that's not four-wheel drive. This this truck is, is, is primarily going to be used for hauling heavy loads. Um, and so that's why we're not going to do all that other crap to it. Um, trucks are inherently bad for off-roading, and so to me, making a truck an off-road beast is, is just wasted money. You might as well get a Jeep, um, or most trucks. Short, short bed, short body trucks can do okay. Um, big trucks like this are not designed for off-roading. They're terrible at it. We're not going to put locking differentials or anything like that. We're going to stay with a limited slip and just have a really, really solid vehicle here. Um, and so that, so that kind of helps us get to our next point. So like I said, we first we want to take care of our maintenance issues and then second we want to make sure and get those quality upgrades that we need to make sure that we're not doing any damage or harm to our vehicle as we continue to use it for what it's used for. The next thing that we're going to add, we're going to add our functional upgrades to it. So specifically these old trucks, these didn't have jake brakes in them. Now we, you know, if you do any amount of towing you can understand how important it is to have a jake brake especially with those heavier loads um, and it just really saves on the wear and tear of your vehicle. It helps you really keep good control of it. So this truck has a jake brake in it. The next thing that we have as we have the airbag suspension in there that gives us the ability to handle especially really top heavy loads but really heavy payloads in the back that the, uh, that's a huge benefit to have that airbag system in there um, and it gives us really good solid control of it helps us stabilize out loads get that back end up a little bit uh, so that we're riding real well um, and, and just helps us keep in control it doesn't let us carry anymore but helps us keep in good control of the load um, as we're carrying it so recently I had 4,000 back or 4,000 pounds of concrete in the back of the truck and then I was pulling the trailer with the with the uh, the tractor on it the jake brake really helped the airbags really helped um, and just keeping everything stabilized and so I, I really really loved having that and then we can look to our performance and our power upgrades after all the other stuff is done so the last thing we're actually going to do here is we're going to throw those tow mirrors on so that way um, you know we can not drive with them without a trailer on uh, <laughs> but uh, we're actually gonna throw the Dodge Ram tow mirrors you know those real nice ones that everybody likes to drive around looking like a jerk with um, and so uh, the, but they are if you're towing they're actually really really handy and really convenient um, but uh, so that's gonna be the last kind of functional upgrade and then we look at performance upgrades so this truck has had aftermarket injectors put in it's had the, uh, the the cold air intake the new exhaust as well as the upgraded turbo and the, and the lift pump and everything so it's set up to really run with a lot of horsepower and a lot of torques and um, so having uh, we, 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 we that's when we can start looking at those performance upgrades to get the power out of it as we need it or if we just desire it you know there's nothing wrong with being a little bit of a gearhead and wanting a little bit of power I know they have things like the the, the water methane methanol whatever it is the injectors um, as well as propane injectors into diesels you can do your research on those and figure out what you want to do I haven't decided if or when I will ever do any of those uh, as of right now I have not needed any more power than what's there it tows really really well this truck will be a million mile truck we'll have it for a long long time um, especially now that you have to have def and EGRs and all that other crap on them um, I don't want to deal with all the computers with that and this one's very very simple and very easy to work on uh, and there's a lot less that's computer controlled with it so so anyways so there's your, kind of your order with things so we want to take care of our uh, our known problems with the vehicle first we want to take care of any um, functional upgrades next and then we can start looking at our horsepower and uh, and getting a little bit more more torque out of the vehicle if we want to you have to understand how diesels operate diesels are different than gas and so if it's your first diesel you need to understand a couple things about them one diesels are a little bit more oily and there's reasons for that if you understand uh, the, the crankcase pressure and everything that goes on there um, there, there's reasons for that for them being a little bit more oily um, a better mechanic than me can certainly explain that there's lots of videos out there on it uh, but uh, so that, that's something to note about diesel engines that are going to be typically just dirtier vehicles uh, diesel is a dirtier product that has dirtier byproducts um, that's why it's you change those fuel filters when you do your oil filters it's not like a gas engine where you can go 100,000 miles before you change your your oil filter so so we want to make sure that um, that that vehicle um, that, that we get all those things done and that we understand what's going into the diesel we can talk about the benefits of gas versus diesel in a different video and this one though I just wanted to help you guys kind of get started if it's your first diesel your first farm truck whatever it is hey sweet pea um that uh that that way you're you're able to get um get a good handle on starting with this so um 
as far as what vehicle you go with, like I said, I don't like a lot of computers, so I look at older vehicles. Um, if you're looking at older vehicles, two really solid ones are the 7.3 uh, Power Stroke and the 5.9 Cummins. They're both really, really solid. Um, I have a friend of mine that loves GM, and he swears by GM and the Duramax. Um, personally, my the ones I was looking at when I bought this was a 5.9 or a 7.3. Um, and so... That was uh, th those were the ones that I was willing to take. So just do your research and understand if any brand was as far and superior to anybody else, they'd be selling to everybody. But I've got one mechanic that loves GM, one that loves Ford, one that loves Dodge, one that loves Toyota. There, uh, th if anybody was that much better, um, it would be it would be apparent in their sales. Um, and so. Um, I think the uh, you think you can't go wrong with it, especially with some of these older ones that are just really really solid models. Thanks again for watching. Check us out on Facebook if you haven't done so. Amanda Lynn does like to post a lot on there, um, and she and she keeps her little blogs going and everything. And like I said, we'll try to be better about getting some more videos out. I apologize for the shakiness. I do have a goat trying to eat the bottom of my tripod. Uh, so, goodness, hey buddy, hey hey hey. So, um, anyways, thanks again, guys. Thanks for watching.